Hello YouTube, it's your boy D giving you this week's episode. Season premiere of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, baby! Let's get it! Woo! It was a two hour premiere, episodes one and two. Man, it was so much stuff. I'm just gonna get to it, shall we? Well, there you go. It starts out with Mimi, Mimi, Steffi, and uh, even my Fifth Evans. With well, Steve is, is married to Fifth Faith Evans, biggest wife, and he's moved on to Jocelyn Hernandez. She, he's moved on. He's in a different space. He's in Las Vegas, baby, living it up. He's in. I think he got some type of hosting some type of award, and and maybe being they, they, their best friends, and she, you can see Steve is happy, saying that Faith don't change him to be a better man. He excited. He didn't even tell maybe that he is getting married. He just moved on. Speaking of Mimi, we found out Mimi was someone was inside. I would think it was inside a car, and not inside a car, and shot inside a car or something. And she was scared. Her daughter was scared. It was a scary situation. He was telling he was telling the girls what happened. Rashida was there. Carly B was there. All that. Yeah, so, sorry, I had to take a little water break. Anyway, I'm back, y'all. So, anyway, you know, Stevie. Anyway, yeah, Stevie is going to, I'm, I'm going to, yeah, Stevie is going to invite her daughter, invite Eva to talk to, uh, to introduce her to Faith. Now, he was wrong for that. He should have had maybe be there first because if he, maybe it's the mother of Eva. He should have done that first. But you know how Stevie is. He doesn't communicate. He does whatever he wanted to do. So anyway, she goes, you know, I think there was some kind of Japanese uh, restaurant, you know, and Stevie is talking to Eva. What happened to the, him and what happened, you know, you know, why he didn't get contacted first about the robbery. I think it was somebody came in and shoot at Mimi's call or whatever. And Eve was like, hey, my mommy had to call 911 first. And she got a little attitude. I was like, go ahead, Eva. Go ahead, girl. She's like a little, I, say what you want about Mimi. Mimi those don't make the right choices with men, especially with Nico and Steve and other. But one thing I must say about Mimi, she did a good job raising Eva. I have to say it. I put her on the line. Eva got some. She got. She's. She what's up? She's like, yeah, uh, uh, you know. And 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 Stevie J was. Steve is like, you ready to meet? You know, Faith Evans. Do you want to? You know, it's okay. If we take it. You know, maybe you go to Vegas with. To uh, you know, you know, he's actually telling. Eva, oh, just pack your things, which you know from Atlanta, and go to Vegas. Miss all your friends, just move on. And Eva's like, uh-uh, I gotta ask my mommy. Ask my mommy. <laughs> I said, go ahead, Eva. She gonna be, she gonna be spitfire. She's a small kid. So, I'm glad. Because Stevie J's just, ugh, he's, ugh, grimy. And then Faith is looking like, mm-hmm. This, what's up? He's just, she's chilling. And I kind of like Faith in this situation. She didn't really, you know, she kind of kept the distance, and I was, it was very respectful, so I thought that was a good scene there. Um, then we get to Spice the Jamaican. She's doing dance all of Tokyo. So they they besties now. They have a dance all, and and there was a promoter dude. I think his his name was Vaughn. I think his name was Vaughn. He had the little glasses on. Took him out to, you know, tell him, Spice, are you doing good? You big and... You you good in Jamaica, but you could need to you know you need to change, not change your image. You need to kind of change your image, to, you know, to be known here. Cause even Spice says uh, says I'm good, I'm big in Jamaica, but I want to take it to the next level. And she took it as he 
she took what Vaughn said as change my skin color. And that's what Vaughn was saying. Maybe he said maybe change your image to could it be though maybe wear them clothing, maybe not necessarily change your look, could the men just maybe give it the you know, change the marketing scheme. But anyway, she took it as I gotta bleach my skin. And and she was like, Oh, this and that I'm like, how did he meant it like that? But anyway, so anyway she you can see one of the scenes she's she's talking to her to her, to her kids and she can tell that she really loves her kids and she because she's in America trying to make it make it big you know take a career to the next level to provide for her family and her son is basically why you leave mommy and you can tell it's an emotional moment she's crying she feels like she, because she's dark skinned in Jamaica that she you know it's like bleach is very common here they, in Jamaica apparently and and she felt, at first she didn't want to do it, but she finally said, "I have to do it if I'm gonna take it to the next level." So she basically goes to to the you know get you know talking about speak you know talking about getting a, getting a skin bleach right. And the doctor was like, "Hey, before we do this, we gotta take a, a cyclic cycle evaluation." And Spice was like, "I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy." She's like, "The doctor is not about being crazy, but look." When you do the procedures, I want to make sure that you understand the rest of the procedures. This is what we have to do. This is the, this is what we must do. And, and anyway, she didn't like it. And she started fitting and she walked off. So I was like, you know. And then one of the scenes, she was doing the video shoot. And she had, she came, light, she was light-skinned. Obviously, she had some kind of makeup on. So, Rashida was there and Carly was there and... Mimi was there, and she was trying to explain the situation, trying to prove a point to be hypocrisy. So she had to do it just to prove a point, and they were not agreeing with it. And it was a back and forth argument that you know she wasn't feeling it, we weren't feeling each other. Yeah, if I'm going over the place, yes, I'm going over the place because I had watched it just Monday, Monday, and I forgot to take notes. So I'm kind of like trying to tie everything together, y'all. It was so much stuff in the, in the uh. In the episodes, that's really crazy. It's probably the best season premiere I've seen. So then there was another scene. Let's see. Oh, scrap, scrap. The yawn is released from prison. At first, he couldn't get out. He was no. He's he was from the halfway house. The only way he get out of the halfway house if there's a he has to have a family member who's not who's not in. And he has any criminal record. Now his mom has a criminal record and his brother has a criminal record. We apparently find out that Scrap has a half sister. The mom contacted and contacted the dad to find out, you know, that he has a half sister. He didn't know about it. He thought his dad was dead, apparently, but the dad just got out of jail and it, he felt some type of way. His mom would say, Look, I did what I had to do just to get you out of jail. You should just be grateful and just move on. And Scrap was like, uh, -uh we need, I need to have questions from my dad that I never got to see. And, you know, this whole thing. His, his dad, you know, Scrap's dad, apparently, I think from what I understand from the storyline, he has some kind of condition that really makes him hard for him to talk. He can write well, but he didn't know. He blamed his, he blamed, you know, Scrap's mother for not really telling him what's going on, blah, blah, blah. He can still affect his Scrap. He said, look, if I knew about my dad, if I knew about, I could be the man I am today. And that's kind of, it's real black, you know, I think in men and job, especially black men, we don't, we don't have really good father figures, so we don't know how to be men. And he t we usually become men from, for our friends who don't also have father figures, so we learn it from them, or we learn from TV shows, or we learn from whatever, and we just, which is affecting our kids. And, you know, even though Scrap is a good father, and I think he's gonna be a great father for his kids. I hope he's gonna be a great father for them. And then we get, and then we're gonna go back to CV. <clears throat> Eva tells, you know, Mimi what happened with the, the, the date with how, how she met Stevie's wife and Mimi got upset. 
and wife Lee so and, and me and Stevie goes to Mimi and and me so so Stevie's like, How can you tell me what happened with the incident with the gun? She said, I didn't know, I was scared, blah blah blah. And me was like, Well, how can you how can you that how can you introduce me to your wife? He said, Oh, I forgot or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's cute, you bad like I'm getting married and and me was like, I don't care that you get married, but I'm the mother of your of the of your child. I should be first to be introduced to Eve. Eve, and he's getting you know, you know how Steve is. He's just he plays it all and he's trying to affect, you know, doesn't really care about Mimi's feelings and this and that. He he says, okay, I'll I'll, I'll get you. I'll have we'll have I'll have a meeting with you and and Faith Evans. So now Faith Evans comes to the dinner. Let me. <clears throat> And she and Faith Evans didn't know the whole situation. She he she thought that Stephen told Mimi what happened about them. He said, "Oh, I probably forgot." He and she said, "Well, that's probably why she's upset." Because throughout the whole dinner, Mimi's trying to express his frustration with Stevie, and 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 Faith kind of went on Mimi's side. And you can see Stevie's face was like, "Oh man, I'm going they, crazy. These two women go against me." It's not, it's not about that, but you were wrong about the situation, Stevie. You need to do better. So, so that was that was the whole didn't see. I thought it was a cute didn't see. And then I guess. Then, then we get to. Am I missing something? Then we get to Carl B. B. Carl B has oh Carl B has a new man, like a thousand times. He has she has a new man. They're going to be best friends, blah, blah, blah. They're going to work it out. And, you know, I'm... Call Me Story is the same storyline that she always finds a new man for every season. So, it's not really much anything on Call B storyline. So, and then so this was her one of her best friends who is in an open relationship with her husband. And they apparently, Carly's best friend, I forget what her name is, probably had a thing with each other. And Call B is like, now, I mean, Carly... Call you best, and I never did then. It's a big, whole big fight. <clears throat> it's, it's crazy. And what else? Am I? And I think I covered all the episodes on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. If I miss anything, put in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel. Like my videos, of course. You know, comment videos. Anyway, this is your boy D. I am out. Holla.